All right, this is the 12 year old with legs. <laughs> this is Ben Zimmerman. We're here at the Unified Finals for IASCA and Mecca. I was asked to show off my car, so take a quick tour through it real quick. It's a 2005 BMW 325XI. It's nothing special as far as a car goes. Um, kind of a entry level BMW sedan, small sedan back in the day. Um, so I've owned it for a long time and it's not my daily driver anymore. So we've dedicated this car to sound quality and a expert level build. So we'll start in the trunk here and explain some of the equipment that's in the trunk. Wow. We have the Zapco Z400.2AP. This is the top of the line Zapco two channel amplifiers. They're 400 watts each. There are six of them in there. There's four visible on the tiers that show the, the gold, and then you can see the, the heat sinks of the two at the very bottom there. There's a mirror at the back, so it gives a perception of depth of the amps, and it looks like there might be more in there, just visual appeal. We've highlighted the car with amber LEDs in the trunk. Amber lighting throughout the car was incorporated from BMW, as most German cars do. So we continued that in the trunk, along with all of the black vinyl uh, looks like leather, faux black leather, vinyl, similar to what's on the inside of the car for black leather interior. There's a Claris by Hybrid Audio. It's the Claris 15. It's a 15 inch subwoofer, dual voice coil, two ohms per coil. How do you have that powered? There's one of these amps bridged to that sub for around a thousand watts of power going to that sub on tap. So you have a wired series? Yes, that's right. correct. Gotcha. Oh, what is all this? What is all that? This is all OEM from the factory. We what did, is this though? We didn't keep, uh, you know, BMW puts that stuff up there. That's, wait, to that's show factory? That those are factory options. Yes. Those this, are fact, that's factory. That's all factory. That's weird. I've never seen that before. Oh, check out most BMWs from the period. They have all that stuff. This was originally gray carpet. It's been dyed to black to match the rest of the trunk. Interesting. The OEM toolkit comes from the factory is in here with factory tools get you going in a time of crisis on the road. <laughs> so who, uh, who did all this? All the install fabrication is by Toby Broadfield at Mobile Audio Plus in Bloomington, Illinois. It's my hometown shop and I've been friends with those guys since the uh, 90s. I met Toby. So you're you were born before the 90s? I was born, yes. Wow. Yes, I'm I not thought you were the youngest 12. competitor here. Nope, I'm actually 40 this year. So wow. the big 4-0. Congratulations. Uh, don't know how that's relevant whatsoever, but <laughs> that's the trunk. That's that's the power system driving everything. There is a uh, what's going on? Yeah, what's going on behind the panels? So behind this panel is the factory battery location. There is a full river battery down there. Um, it's a big, big big battery. Big capacity beefy battery. What are you doing, SPL? We're not doing SPL, but when you have six <laughs> big amplifiers, it requires a lot of juice down there. Um, behind this panel also, behind specifically this part of um, the cosmetic trim piece there is all the fusing. You might ask, how do you get to the fusing? This trunk is all very modular. It comes apart very quickly, very easily. Take this panel out, this panel out, this panel out, and then the side panels come out. I can do that in about 30 seconds. Really? Um, actually needed to be done yes and then it all wow. goes back very easy also all the led strips have quick disconnects on them so it can be done very very quickly cool. coming out the rear bumper underneath i don't know we need to highlight this but there is a uh, power plug for power, the power plug supply. going to the battery so i can plug my external power supply in for while i'm demoing at events like this all day long so i can plug in power not drain the battery down well why would anyone want to demo this car you know you don't have I, an answer for that. I, I think it sounds pretty good, and apparently a lot of <laughs> other people do too. Um, okay. We did just get the awards for the inaugural 2020 event, it's a 3X event that for Iaska, Iaska, does, right? Iaska does here in finals. Um, it's the inaugural event for the next season. I happened to win first place in the expert class. And Little little baby first place. Little baby first place. And little. then for the 2019 championship, I was the runner-up in expert class to Brian Mitchell. Wow. And you know, to Brian Mitchell, it's almost like a first place. It's I, I'm stoked at the results. What's up, of Vinny? This. Yes. Hey, hey. Yep. You ever heard this car? Yeah, I listened. To it's it. all right. Yeah, yeah. 
It's all right, Linda. It's all right. <laughs> At best. Did you guys not on a good on day. We're, you know, we don't. Really, you <laughs> yeah, know, we no, don't no. think about okay. it. You know. <laughs> well, thank you for your judging. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. You want to move to the inside? Uh, I think we've yeah. covered everything back are you, here. Are you inviting me inside of your car? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Here, yeah. Go around yeah. I'm going to open I'll... the door for you as a matter of fact. Oh back. my God. What a gentleman. Help if I unlock the car first. Don't do that. This is not... This is an old car, so it has an actual key, not proximity key. So you actually have to hit the button to unlock the car. Wow. What there are we... Go. Holy... Holy moly. Go ahead and pay attention to the door while that's open first. Actually, yeah. What's what's up with the door? We did go ahead and reupholster the door cards. It's the actually really velour. nice. It's a uh, quilted pattern there going on. Is and this Alcantara? It's, it's actually Velour. Oh, it's Velour. It's Velour. And then we Ooh. did all of the pillars in the car and the headliner, which you're not going to be able to see on camera in this dark. You sure? It's a sign. Um, we got it. We the, got uh, the headliner up there is the same quilted design, the same material, so it's all it all carries throughout the vehicle. We did also paint the factory faux wood trim, piano gloss black, which has a lot of fingerprints on it currently. How'd you paint that? I had a body shop paint that. Because that came so, out good. Yeah, yeah. Really it's, nice. it's my actually my brother-in-law Fallot's out of body owns a uh, he owns a body shop where I'm from, so he did all the the paint work on that. Cool. Hop in the other side. Explain yep. to me what's going on here. Oh. No, you know these rear doors get some more light in here for you. You know I still remember uh, the first time I got in this car. I still remember, Dude. 2016 finals. And it still smells like parts. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess. Let me. It smells all right. Yes. All right. So what? All what right. do we have going on in here? So what we have going on here? Um, the interior of the car is designed to be fully functional for a sound quality, expert level competition vehicle, where we've placed every driver in the car at an optimum location to achieve the best sound quality possible, giving you a deep stage, a wide stage, and maximize the size of the drivers while maintaining a factory OEM-ish appearance. OEM-ish, says the guy with a custom dashboard. So Are if you you'll notice, goddamn mind? if you'll notice, we kept, <laughs> we kept most of the factory dash. There's a natural, there's a natural line with the trim that goes across, so we've just modified the top half so it of the goes dash. with the oh yeah that's this that, is wood grain too this was all wood grain originally but now it's piano black but as you, when it's closed you'll see it all just carries through yeah no it looks so nice. so we decided to cut from that natural trim line on up the whole top of the hat dash has been removed which allows us to place very large dedicated mid ranges essentially at the firewall corners um, which vent into the cowl for an infinite baffle um, mid-range application, we give. So what are you What are you using? Them? These are the Hybrid Audio Legadia X six drivers, which are a 7.1 inch. They are available in a paper cone or a carbon fiber cone option, with or without a phase plug. So I opted to use the paper cone version with the phase plug for this any, application. Any reason why? Um, to my ears, the paper cone present the most natural sound. Um, the carbon is great for if you want a really live, lively sound, kind of a, a live sound experience. Um, and they, they can also give you a lot of, you know, impact uh, dynamics, more so than the paper, but the paper is still plenty dynamic um, and it has a texture to the sound that is completely natural. If you look at high-end home audio speakers, um, for instance, Wilson Audio, they, they all use paper cone drivers. And it's my opinion that they know what they're doing and the, that <laughs> that paper cone there it's a lightweight super lightweight material that moves back and forth it's got a it's got a strong controlled magnet system and suspension it just presents a supernatural sound can i give my theory on why i think you chose those sure before i do that can i ask you what they're crossed at sure on the, on the top end sure I'm not going to ask for any secrets. Oh, there are no secrets here. I'll tell you all, all right. about this. All right. Says the guy so, with the grill cloth dashboard. Hey, we're <laughs> going to light those up so you can see them while we talk about them. How about all that? Right. So what do you have them? Uh, what do you have them across that? Hang on. So 
if you can see through there. It's tough. On the camera, it's tough. I can see through it. Very, very tough. Hold on one second. Let me zoom in. So, so oh, yeah, I'm, I'm shining my, my phone's flashlight through the grill cloth so you can see the Legatia X6 yeah. down there. The, the phase plug's down there. and I can see it a lot better in person than I do on the screen. Right, right, right. But, so oh. those are those are crossed at 200 hertz. They play from 200 hertz all the way up to 9,000 hertz. 9, so hertz. I'm using them in a wideband application. Although they're a six inch driver, or technically a 7.1 inch driver, um, they can play to 10K on it, axis. It, on axis, correct. Yeah. So we've aimed them. They're not exactly on axis at your ears. Close enough. They are they, they are close enough. Um, I've used processing power to kind of boost a little bit of that top end. Not a whole lot. Um, in fact, there's more so cutting in the lower frequencies than boosting in the top end. Um, but, but using a 9 kilohertz crossover point to the tweeters, we're able to achieve a seamless blend. Um, keep and, and that keeps the entire vocal range from 200 hertz to about 5,500 hertz is where the vocal range lives um, in its entirety. So we, we can keep that all in a single driver. Yeah. So that keeps system coherency and the crucial mid-range, all the, all the vocals, that's all coming from a single driver. It's not split between two or three drivers. Um, so Which that, is typical. that goes a long way for, for coherency when you're listening to the system. Yeah. So can I tell you why I think... The, um, actually, again, before I ask you... Sure. Did you audition all of these different options? I did. All right. Oh, yeah. So can I give my opinion on why you might have a technical explanation sure. of why you might have picked it? Sure. So, all right. A paper cone versus a carbon cone, what is stiffer? Is the carbon. Carbon. Sure. On a stiffer cone, the breakup starts later okay. in the frequency, sure. but it's a lot harsher. It's a lot more exaggerated. Sure. So that's number one, uh -huh. breakup, cone breakup. Sure. It's a lot harsher and more noticeable on a stiffer driver. Sure. Number two, you went with the uh, face plug over the dust cap uh -huh. because, again, a dust cap has more breakup than a face plug. A face plug has no breakup because it's, you know, there's nothing in the center of the driver. Right. When you have um, a dust cap, the glue joint from the mm -hmm. dust cap to the cone mm -hmm. and the dust cap itself, they're actually a lot more complicated than anybody would really think to believe. And it probably allows for a driver that has low inductance to have pretty much a seamless top end until, you know, it's natural roll off because right. of, you know, inductance right. or beaming right. or whatever it may right. be. That's why I think you might have picked it. That might be the technical one. Could be, could be. Um, I also rely pretty heavily on guidance from the manufacturer. Um, in my specific application, this is what was highly recommended. Uh, there is another advantage to that phase plug and that being thermal capability to- Oh, because they absorb. Well, they-, they from they, the voice they, coil. They, exactly, it acts as a heat sink for the yeah. voice coil. So, oh. yeah. Cool, so what do you got going on with the tweeters? Tweeters? Yeah, close that door. Oh, oh I actually spy something else, but go on with the tweeters. We'll come back. Go on, go we'll on come with back. the tweeters. Let me, uh, let me raise the exposure here, if I even can. Yeah, go for it. All right, you you might want to show off that one with the door open. You know what? On it. All right, whatever. I can't really see. There we go. There we go. OK. So what do we got going on there? So those are the, again, Legatia X1. They're Hybrid Audio's top of the line tweeter. Um, they are a ring radiator tweeter, a, a large format ring radiator within a still small car sized um, tweeter application. They don't have a big mounting bat baffle to make them a technically large format. Um, did we just go call it for trophies? I don't I don't think so. Okay. Ign ignore those guys. Okay, we're going to ignore they're those just guys. Loud. They're, they're we're, SPL guys. So we're in between I Iaska and Mecha trophies right now. So we're waiting for them to give the call for Mecha trophies. So Ben is very so, uh, anxious. I'm not anxious. Hey, you I'm eager. You're scared. I'm scared, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I see something else, though. Sure. What do you got going on down there? The L2 SE. Um, is that it? is the Legadia 2 SE, special edition. Um, what it, is it doing a, down there? So. There's a factory location for the mid-range from the factory. There was a three-way set, Harman Kardon from BMW, um, with the mid-base, mid-range, and tweeter was in the OEM sale position. Oh, we are being called for trophies. We'll oh. resume. Oh, we'll go. Yeah, like two more. We're, we're fine for now. No, there's a lot more coverage. Yeah. We'll come back. You can edit this. What? You're going to have to edit this. Oh, 
Just together. Tell me, tell me about that. Uh, Just finish that uh, up. Uh, Come on. Okay. You're yeah, in extreme you... class. They're about to do stock. Calm this down. is true. I have to take pictures of all the classes. All right. Just hurry up. What do you got for the two? The, the L2SEs, again, it was a factory provision for the mid range, so we wanted to fill it with something. So Just... we did go ahead and fill it with an L2SE with the anticipation of experimenting with phase. Out of phase, different man manipulation uh, to expand. We talked about that. We once. have talked about this We've several times. This, we have. You were yeah. gonna pretty. I, I won't. I won't reveal your possible secret. No. So if, if you're familiar with differential rear fill, it's the same similar concept um, to where you're taking common information out and um, e expanding the stage artificially um, with a highly processed signal, um, yeah. delayed. Um, so, so what's actually handling your processor? That's the Zapco HDSP. That's the controller for it right uh -huh. there? It's HDSP5. Cool. Um, it's a 16-channel processor with a high-resolution player built in. That's what you're looking at here is the controller, and that also plays all the files. Wow. So we will resume after trophies. We will. Maybe. All right. Maybe. <laughs> I think that pretty much covers it, though. I, I think we've failed to mention the mid bases. All right, we'll go, we'll get into it. Mid bases are down there. They that are. That actually looks really nice, by the way. Holy shit! I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. They are Legati 8 SEs. Let's get into it later. Okay.